Are you obsessed with details? Absolutely. And I think that's why we're a great team because... I'm not. You're not? <laughs> no, he is so great at vision and coming up with great ideas that move things and you think, God, I wish I'd thought of that. But I'm really good at, you know, doing this and kind of, you know, executing. And so it's, and I get nervous about kind of looking that far ahead. And Andy gets bored, you know, looking to down at his feet. I can so only measure a handle length 16 times. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, I think three of the other patterns that I might be missing. Kate and Andy may bring different skills to the business, but they speak in one voice when describing their brand. This represents everything that we need represented. And Kate Spade is Kate. Kate grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. She brings a lot of tradition to it. I think there's a lot of classicism to what it is. The color is obviously something she's done since the beginning. So that's what makes it not just a classic. It, 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 right. It's classic with a lot Distorted of fun. Distorted classics. Fun to it. Because I think just, I mean, there are a lot of classics out there. And I think, who, I mean, I don't necessarily want another just basic one. And if so, I already own it. So in order to make it a little <laughs> more interesting, I think you have to distort it a little and make right. it. More New. Novel, yeah. yeah, a little more novel and interesting. And then this little heel was inspired from the perfume bottle, where you kind of think, oh, I have to have that. I just have to have that. I don't know if I need it, but I have to have Something it. Something about it. But long before there was a brand, there was a girl, Kate Brosnahan of Kansas City, Missouri, the fifth child in a family of six, part girl next door, part glamour puss. I really did like fashion, and I really thought I was very innovative. So my mother was actually very good in encouraging me to dress however I wanted. I mean, you know, my sisters would sometimes think, oh my God, you let her buy that fuzzy <laughs> leopard coat at that vintage store, you know. And I thought, of course, I looked like Audrey Hepburn in this coat, you know. Did you have fashion role models in your family, in your community? My mother was one. I mean, I thought she dressed beautifully, and she also really, again, loved it. I mean, you know, you watch her get dressed, and, um, you know, she really did like it a lot, and I just thought, oh, and I just remember kind of watching, thinking, I can't wait till I can do that. <laughs> I want to paint my nails, I want to wear lipstick, I want to put my hair up in a hairdo, hence the hairdo. <laughs> I don't think I thought I'd be in fashion, though. Now, what did you no. think you'd be when you were up? Journalism. I thought I'd... Actually, I never even thought I'd be you. I thought I'd be Holly Hunter from Broadcast News, <laughs> behind the scenes, running around really fast, paying attention to you know, what it needed to get yeah. done. And I, that's what I thought. I mean, I don't think <laughs> I imagined. Produce. I didn't grow up thinking, oh, I'm going to You're be a designer. Crazy. At Arizona State University in the early 80s, she met Andy when they were both working at the same clothing store. He was a triathlete and she was a non-athlete, but she took up biking as a way to get close to him. It worked. Then in 1986, she went to New York with $7 in her pocket and landed a secretarial job at Mademoiselle Magazine. Andy followed soon after and got a job in advertising as a copywriter. And while she was climbing the ladder at the magazine, he was winning awards and making a name for himself in the ad business.